Hi everyone. M1 vector, well, mechanics, sorry, stop calling it M1, there is no M1 anymore. Mechanics vectors. <clears throat> so we've done quite a bit of vectors work uh, in the pure side of things, so just the theoretical side of things, but now we need to apply it uh, to what we know already. Now, <clears throat> good thing about vectors is that the SUVAT laws still apply. Um, so for example, you know that V equals u plus a t, that is the same in vector form because velocity is a vector. So you can describe velocity uh, in that way. Similarly, um, s is u t plus half a t squared, right? So s is displacement. So displacement can have direction and magnitude, can't it? So therefore, the same uh, would apply in vector form, right? Just like force, F equals ma, well, F is a vector, well, F uh, is a force, which means it can be, have magnitude and it can be applied in any direction, and acceleration is the same, it has a magnitude and can be applied in any direction. Notice that M here, and T, and T, and T squared, and the half, they're all just numbers, they're called scalars, okay, because they scale the vector enlarge it or, or uh, make it smaller. So there are three equations so far that we can apply. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. This doesn't really work in vectors because what does the vector V squared mean and the vector U squared mean? Uh, it doesn't really mean anything. You're going to use that more for when you're dealing with magnitudes. So stick to things which you know, aren't squared, where vectors are squared, you know, it doesn't really make sense conceptually, I'm not really sure what that means, a vector times another vector. Um, so let's, let's keep it to these three equations for now. But, and there's a but here, we now have a new one, a new one to add, okay, where we've got R is R naught plus VT. Now, this is another one that you just have to remember, but what is this then? So R, R is new position. Okay, and you, we'll explain this in a second. So for now, R is new position. So the position vector relative to an origin, where, where is it? You know, if we're talking about a ship moving, and this is what we are talking about really. So when cars are moving, ships are moving, people are moving, where are they after a certain amount of time? R naught, this is initial position. Okay. V is your constant velocity. Very important that this formula is for constant velocity and T is time. So let's just explain that rationale a little bit. So where did that formula come from? This R equals R naught plus VT. Well, <clears throat> what we need to imagine then is that remember R naught means initial position. So initial position vector. So let's say uh, I've got a ship here, and remember this is the coordinate R naught, so that's in capital letters, and the vector is in lowercase, all right? So let's say this is my ship, R naught, this is where it's starting. And then the captain says, uh, right, I want you to travel, um, I want you to travel northwest um, for, at like a constant speed, so if we say northwest at a constant speed um, of, I don't know, 10 knots or 10 uh, meters per second or whatever you want to call it, right? So northwest, where is northwest? Well, that's like there, isn't it, right? 45 degrees to the horizontal there. And they're saying with speed 10 meters per second. So this thing has magnitude magnitude 10 meters per second, isn't it? Well, it's not very accurate if I call it per second. It should be like kilometers per hour or whatever. But let's just let's just say it's in seconds to keep things simple. Okay? And T is in time, isn't it? Right. So let's think about what's happening. So this ship starts here, right? And then every time it moves, it's following this velocity 10 meters per second in the direction of northwest. So this is 10 meters per second, yeah? So this is one second gone. 
and then here, this is your second second. So two seconds gone, three seconds, four seconds. So after four seconds, this thing has traveled 40 meters. Can you see? Three seconds, four seconds. Each time is 10 meters per second in that direction. So the ship ends up here. And this is what this R is about here. This new position, this R, remember it's a coordinate, so I'll put it as capital R and the vector lowercase r, right? <clears throat> so how do we describe where the ship is? Well, the ship, the new position of the ship is its initial position, which is over here, plus, and then all I've done is take the velocity vector, and then however many times I want to move for. So I could do four seconds, I could do 10 seconds, which means I'll be all the way over here, like 10 times. And this time where I end up over here, R, that's my new vector R. Do you see? Because to get from naught to R over here, I need to go up R naught, that's this bit, right? Plus some amount, that's what this T is, some amount of time lots of the velocity to get there. So actually, what we've done here is a vector line equation, which you'll need later on in second year, okay? So a vector line, well, as, as in that concept of being a vector line. So just to make that really clear, what I'm saying is, I start from an origin, right? I want to describe where this ship is, so where this coordinate R is, right? So R equals, all I know is, where the ship started from, so R naught. So to get from here to here, I first need to go up R naught, the pos initial position. And then I travel for a certain number of times. Okay, so can, you can see here, this is one lot of T. Uh, so this is my velocity vector, yeah? Velocity vector. And then I've gone a little bit like halfway along my velocity vector to get to this point here, you can see, or a quarter or a third of it or whatever. So I've gone R naught plus some amount, some T, lots of V, or normally we say VT, right? So I've traveled with my velocity for a certain amount of time and that's ended me up here. So hopefully you can see I've gone up to R naught and gone one lot, two lot, and then a third, and then I'm at my, my point R, okay? Let's see how this works in practice then, because uh, we'll probably split this video into two, definitely, actually. <clears throat> so let's have a go. So I've listed my four equations, my four vector equations possible. Let's look at the scenario we've got here and see which one we need. So it says particle P has velocity minus three, one. Okay, remember this one, is only applicable for constant velocity. It must be constant velocity for us to do it, get this to work. The particle moves with constant acceleration, so that straight away puts that equation out. Find the speed of the particle and the bearing on which it's traveling at time t. Hmm, okay, so at time t is zero, that says to me, initial velocity. So u is always initial velocity, isn't it? So minus three and one, great. The particle moves with constant acceleration, so A is 2 and 3. Find the speed of the particle um, after 3 seconds and its bearing. Well, the only thing that involves P is 3 and all these things is this one here, isn't it? And I want to find final velocity anyway. So V is U plus A lots of T. So V must be um, minus 3, 1 plus a, which is two, three, times by time, which is three. Remember this is a scalar, and as it's a scalar, it scales everything, the x and the y, okay? So that's minus three, one, plus three lots of two is six, plus three lots of three is nine. So that gives me three and 10. But it's asking me for speed. So speed is the magnitude of velocity, and we know straight away top thing squared plus bottom thing squared. So that's root 109. And the bearing, remember bearing is always relative to north, right? Uh, and the bearing, it's saying it's three across from here. So there's three 
and it's 10 up. There's 10, and we're trying to find the angle relative to north. So let's look for that angle then, right? So that's 10 there, 3 there. So theta, or the bearing, must be 10 to the minus 1 of 3 over 10. And remember, bearings, you always kind of give in terms of three digits. So 10 to the minus 1 in degrees, 10 to the minus 1 of 3 over 10, 16.69, so that would be 017 degrees. Do you see? It's 2 SF. So if it was 34 degrees, it would be 034 degrees, because right? it's a bearing. Next, <coughs> so I'm just going to do lots of examples with you now. Right? So uh, example 2, in this question I represents uh, east and we, J represents north. We knew that anyway, we know that I is X and J is Y. A resultant force is 3 plus uh, 3i plus 8j. So we're talking about forces. So we must be talking about this one. Okay. So we know straight away that F equals ma from our Newton's law, don't we? And F, remember, is the resultant force. That's all the forces added up to give us our mass times acceleration. So straight away. Our resultant force is 3 and 8, and it acts upon a particle with mass of a half, and we're trying to find the acceleration uh, because it's asking for it as P and Q. So <coughs> remember what we said about scalars, right? So at the moment, acceleration is halved, so we're going to have to times everything by 2, so 6 and 16 uh, must be A. Right, because I'm timesing everything by two, so I have to times top and bottom by two. So that is the acceleration. So P is six, Q is sixteen. Done. It's not saying the magnitude of the acceleration. The part B is saying find the magnitude and bearing of the acceleration. So straight away, top thing squared plus bottom thing squared. That's uh, thirty-six plus yeah. So 2 root 73, okay, done, there's the magnitude, how do you find the bearing, just like before, there's north, uh, 6 across, 16 up, but we're trying to find the bearing, so we want this bit, so there's our 6, 16, theta, tan to the minus 1, 6 over 16, blah blah blah, 6 divided by 16, so 20.5, so again, oh, 21 degrees to 2 SF, right, or nearest degree. Number two, <coughs> well, part B of the same uh, example set. A boat is modeled as a, as a particle of uh, 60 kilogram mass acted on by three forces. Right, so let's remember what we're talking about. We're talking about forces, but F is the resultant force, which means all the forces added up. So here, F1 plus F2 plus F3, that all equals F, right? It's the resultant force. All the forces added up. It's MA. So force 1, 80, 50. Force 2, 10P, 20Q. Force 3, whoops, minus 75. <clears throat> minus 75 and 100. And it says it's accelerating at a rate of 0.8 minus 1.5. <coughs> and we know the mass was 60, so that's our m value here. So how are we going to find this? Well, top must equal top, and bottom must equal bottom. So 10p plus 5 must equal 60 times 0.8, so 48. And on the bottom, 150 plus 20q must equal 60 times minus 1.5, because it's a scalar, so minus 90. So I can see from the top, 10p plus 5 is 48, so 48 subtract 5 divided by 10 is 4.3. So p must be 4.3, and q minus 90 subtract 150 divided by 20 is minus 12. Cool, video one. More examples in video two.